Okay, so topic six, part B, that's where we're going to start looking at solving, so there would be solving radical equations. Now in particular though, it's going to be more dealing with square root equations. All right, so square root equations. Um, now, so remember, this is just a basic review. So make sure that you go back through the lessons to understand more about the process, why, why we do certain things that we do when solving radical equations. So all I need to do with this small amount of time that we have is just work some problems. So number one, let's suppose you had this problem. You had the square root of 5x minus 3 is equal to 3. One of the things I want you to notice is that this is a square root equation. And it's a square root because if you notice the index, there's no number there. See that index right here? It's understood to be a 2, so square root. Also notice, and this is important, when solving a square root equation, when solving a square root equation, you want to make sure that the radical is by itself, and that's true for any radical equation, whether it's cube root, fourth root, fifth root, and so on. Always make sure you get the radical by itself, and in this case, it already is. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this over. And so basically, what you want to do is get rid of that square root symbol. You want to get rid of that radical symbol. So you want to get x by itself at some point. So the way to solve a square root equation is this. You're going to raise both sides. So notice I'm enclosing both sides in parentheses. You're going to raise both sides to the second power because that's, that's uh, the index is 2, square root. So this were cube root, you'd cube both sides. Fourth root, you'd raise both sides to the fourth power. But we are dealing with square root equations, so you're going to square both sides. It turns out that the square and the square root undo each other. And so, so, so that kind of makes sense because remember the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, which means the square root of 2 squared. So the square and the square root undo each other, you're left with 2. And that's kind of true because the square root of 2, the square root of 2, the square root of 4, and that's equal to 2. And so that's the same idea here. So, so they undo each other, so you get 5x minus 3 is equal to, and then 3 squared is 9. And so notice I went from a square root equation to a linear equation. And that's always the easy kind when you go from a square root equation to a linear. And so, so I'm going to solve for x, I'm going to add 3 to both sides. And so when I add 3 to both sides, I get 5x equal uh, 12. And divide both sides by 5, I get x to be uh, 12 fifths. Okay? Now, just, just to let you know something, whenever you raise both sides to an even power, you must check your solutions. Whenever you raise both sides to even power, you must check your solutions, okay? It's, uh, especially if there are variables on both sides. So notice that this is a, just a number here, and it's positive, so this should work. This will work, but to, to just uh, be on the safe side, whenever you raise both sides to an even power, you must check your solutions. So whenever, Whenever you raise both sides of an equation, both sides of an equation to an even power, you must check. Check, check the proposed solutions. Okay? So you check the proposed solutions. So let's go ahead and check this. So you always go back to the original problem. So let's check. Let's check x equal 12 fifths. So let's go back to the original. So we have the square root of 5x minus 3 equal 3. That was the original. So in place of x, I'm going to substitute 12 fifths. So I get the square root of 5 times 12 fifths minus 3. And I want to see if that's going to equal the other side, which is 3. Well, 5 minus 12 fifths, remember the 5's divide out. So you get 12 here. 1 times 12 is 12. So I get the square root of 12 minus 3. And remember, the square root of 12 minus 3 is 9, so that's the square root of 9 here. And the square root of 9 is 3, which is the same as the other side. So 12 fifths is going to work. And it's going to turn out, just to let you know, that it's going to turn out that if you have a positive square root on this side, and it's a positive number on this side, or 0, then this should work. Okay? 
Now, there are variables on both sides, a variable here and a variable on that side. You are going to have to check. You are going to have to check your solutions. All right, so that was number one. So let's look at number two. Number two, let's suppose we had this, number two. So number two, we have the square root of x plus 5 minus 2 is equal to 7. Now I want you to notice something. So when we made our, our when we talked about this, we said that, that before I raised both sides to the second power, remember we're talking about square root, before we raised both sides to the second power, we got to get the radical by itself. So notice over here it's not. So I got to get rid of this subtract 2. So the opposite of subtracting 2 is to add 2 to both sides. So, so when I combine like terms, this is 0 right here. So I get the square root of x plus 5 is equal to, and then 7 plus 2 is 9. And so now this looks like this now. And so I'm going to raise both sides to even power. So you're going to raise both sides to even power, to the second power rather, square root. So you're going to square both sides. The square and the square root don't do each other. So you get x plus 5 is equal to, and then 9 times 9 is 81. 9 squared, 81. And so now I'm going to now notice I went from a square root equation to a linear equation. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. So I get x to be 76. All right, now we got to check this though. So make sure you check. So let's check x equals 76. So go back to the original. Always go back to the original because you could have made a mistake somewhere along the process. Always do the original. So you get the square root of x plus 5 minus 2 is equal to 7. So in place of x, I'm going to substitute 76. So I get the square root of 76 plus 5, subtract 2, and I want to see if that's going to equal 7. Well, 76 plus 5 is 81, right? So I get the square root of 81 minus 2, and the square root of 81 is 9, and 9 minus 2 is equal to 7. So x equals 76 is going to be a solution. All right, so that was number, number 2. All right, let's see number three. Number three, we have this for number three. We have the square root of x plus 5 plus 9 equals 0. Now, we're going to have a special case here. I want you to notice something. So, so just like we did in the previous problem, I had to get the radical by itself. So I subtract, so I added 2 to both sides. Here, to get the square root of x plus 5 by itself, I'm going to have to subtract 9 from both sides. So you do the opposite. So I get the square root of x plus 5 is equal to a negative 9. Now, remember, we were checking, right? And, and we did mention that, that for the first two, this is going to uh, be a solution. This is going to be a solution as long as this number on the other side is positive or 0. But notice this is negative. So what's going to happen is that is that this is not going to be a solution. So this will, we're going to at some point say no solution. But let's see why. Let's see why this is no solution. So so notice that this square root, this square root. So I'm taking a square root of some expression. So this square root is either going to be positive or zero. But on this side it's negative. So a positive. This is a positive right here. A positive square root of a real number is either positive or zero, never negative. So right away you know it's not going to be no you know that you won't have any solutions. So you're going to say no solution. But let's see why. So we're going to go ahead and square both sides. So I'm going to square both sides. Now notice I'm putting this in parentheses, the, the negative nine in parentheses. And then the square and the square root do each other. So I get x plus five is equal to a negative nine times a negative nine is a positive eighty one. Subtracting 5 from both sides, get x by itself, I get x to be 76. Now let's check. Always go back to the original, to the original. Nowhere else, always go back to the original. So I have the square root of x plus 5 plus 9 equals 0. So in place of x, I'm going to substitute 76. So here's what I have though. Now watch, I have the square root of 76 plus 5 plus 9 and then I want to see if that's going to equal 0. Well, 76 plus 5 is 81. So I have the square root of 81, square root of 81 plus 9, and the square root of 81 is 9. 9 plus 9 is 18. Well, that is not 0. That is not 0. So that means that 76 is not a solution. But since that was the only proposed solution, then for the answer to the original, if you want to solve this, you're going to say 
the answer, you're going to say no solution. So this equation, this equation has no solutions. There's no real number. No real number. You're going to substitute x bar, then add 5, take the square root of it, and add 9. That's ever going to be 0. It's not possible. Okay? All right. Now let's look at number 4. Okay, so number 4, we have this situation, number 4. Okay, number 4, we have this. Now, okay, we have this number 4. We have the square root of x plus 9 plus 3 equal x. Now, which you know is the difference between 4 and number two, let's say. In number two, you see the variable was only underneath the radical, was in the radicand. There were no variables anywhere else. So if you go back to one and the same thing for three, even though there was no solution, the same thing. The variable, you only saw the variable underneath the radical, the variable wasn't anywhere else. In this case though, you have a variable under the radical and you have a variable somewhere else. Okay? So you can see what's going to happen in that case. Just as before, though, you got to get the square root by itself. So let's go ahead and subtract 3 from both sides. And so I get the square root of x plus 9 equal x minus 3. Okay? Now, remember what we've been doing. So once you get to that point, remember you got to get rid of that square root now. The next step is to get rid of that square root. So to get rid of that square root, you're going to raise both sides to the second power. So here's what it looks like. You're going to put each of those sides in parentheses, and you're going to square it. Notice that x minus 3 is in parentheses, and it's being squared. The square root of x plus 9 is in parentheses, and it's being squared. And the square root of x plus 9 times the square root of x plus 9, or the square root of x plus 9 squared, these undo each other, so you're left with the radicand x plus 9. On this side, though, if you think about what you're doing, this means x minus 3 times itself. So you're going to FOIL this. You're multiplying two binomials. So when I FOIL this, x times x is x squared. The outer is a negative 3x. The inner is also a negative 3x. And the last, a negative 3 times a negative 3 is a positive 9. Combining like terms, I get x squared. A negative 3x and a negative 3x is a negative 6x plus 9. Now that goes here. See, that is this. So I get x squared minus 6x plus 9. Now notice I went from a from a uh, square root equation to a quadratic to a quadratic equation. In the previous three problems, I went from a square root equation to a linear equation. Now it's quadratic. So remember to solve a quadratic equation, you got to bring everything to one side, all the terms to one side, and zero on the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and subtract x on both sides, and notice I'm aligning my like terms, and I'm going to subtract nine as well. So I'm just do two steps in one. So x minus x and 9 minus 9 is 0 equal x squared. A negative 6x and a negative x is a negative 7x. And a positive 9 and negative 9 is 0. So I have this quadratic equation. And um, I, I want 0 on the other side. So I'm just going to transpose both sides. And so in other words, 0 equals x squared minus 7x is the same as x squared minus 7x equals 0. And the way it's going to work out for us, you don't have to use the quadratic formula here. The way it's going to work out for us is that this will be factorable. So let's just go ahead and factor this. It's easy to factor. See, I can factor out an x. So I get x times x minus 7 equals 0. And then remember the zero factor property? The zero factor property from last week and from a previous course. So the zero factor property states that if you have two or more factors whose product is zero, then one of these factors has to be 0. So you just set each equal to 0, just like this. And notice what we did. We went from a square root equation to a quadratic equation to two linear equations. And so you just solve for x. Well, x is already by itself here. And over here, when I add 7 to both sides, I get x to be 7. Okay. Now, one thing you got to remember, and this is going to be important, Whenever you raise, whenever you raise both sides, both sides to an even power, and when I say both sides, I mean both sides of an equation, both sides of an equation to an even power, you must check 
for extraneous roots or extraneous solutions. And sometimes uh, people will use the word for extraneous, they'll use the word false. So false solutions. So these two proposed solutions are sometimes we'll refer to those as potential solutions. They may be solutions, they may not be solutions. One may work, the other may not work. So you gotta check. So whenever you raise both sides of an equation to an even power, and I did, see that? Two is an even power. You gotta check for extraneous solutions. That's why one of the, that's why we, we did this here. So I raised both sides to even power, I checked it. So 76 worked. I raised both sides to even power, I checked it. In the original, 76 did not work in that case, number three. All right, so you must check. So whenever you raise both sides of an equation to even power, you have to check for extraneous solutions. All right, so let's check them. So let me go ahead and use another paper. All right, so number four. So we're checking. So this is where we're going to check. So remember, always go back to the original. You must go back to the original. You must check in the original. The original equation. And so in this case, number four, number four, the original equation was this. So I have the square root of x plus 9 plus 3 equal x. So let's check the first one. So the first one to check is x equals 0. So in place of x, where we see the variable x, I'm going to substitute 0. So I get the square root of 0 plus 9, then plus 3, and I want to see if that's going to equal the other side, which is x, remember, is 0. We're letting x be 0. Well, 0 plus 9 is 9, so I get the square root of 9 plus 3, and I know the square root of 9 is 3, and this 3 plus this 3 is equal to 6, which is not 0. So x equals 0 is not a solution. So that's an extraneous, extraneous solution, a false solution. Okay, so I'm not going to use it. That's not a solution to the original, pro to the original problem. Okay, well, let's check 7 then. Let's see if 7 works. So let's check x equals 7. Do the same thing. Go back to the original. So my original, I have the square root of 7 plus 9. 7 plus 9 plus 3. And I want to see if that's going to equal x, which we're saying is 7. Well, 7 plus 9 is 16, right? So I get the square root of 16 plus this term, which is 3. The square root of 16 is 4, and 4 plus 3 is equal to 7. So in, in our case, when we had these two proposed or potential solutions, 0 did not work, but 7 does. So you're going to say the answer, the answer you're going to say is just x equals 7. Okay? x equals 7. All right, let's look at, let's look at number 5. So in number 5, Let's suppose we had this one for number five. Let's suppose we had this. All right, we had um, the square root of 4x, that, that, that's a 4, 4x plus 17 equal x plus 3. Notice that in this case, the, the absolute, I'm, I'm sorry, the square root's already by itself. So, so, and remember the square root, right? The index is 2. I'm, the index is 2, so I'm going to go ahead and and uh, square both sides. Let me go ahead and rewrite this over. All right, so I'm going to raise both sides to the second power. That's the only way I can I can get rid of that square root symbol. So when I square both sides, on this side, the square and the square root undo each other, so you're left with the radicand, which is just 4x plus 17 equal. And over here, if I square x plus 3 times itself and use the FOIL and use FOIL, I get um, x times x is x squared, the outer is 3x, the inner is 3x, and the last, a positive 3 times a positive 3, is a positive 9. Combining like terms, I get x squared plus 6x plus 9. And that's going to go here. x squared plus 6x plus 9. Just like, just like in the previous problem, we were number 4, we want zero, see, the, the, this is now quadratic, right? So we went from a square root to quadratic, just like we did here. We went from square root to quadratic. 
So, so remember, you want it when when solving a quadratic equation, you want zero on one side. So let's just go ahead and just like we did in the previous problems, let's subtract four x from both sides. Notice I'm aligning my like terms, and then I'm gonna subtract 17 as well. Align your like terms. So I'm just gonna do two steps in one. 4x minus 4x is 0, 17 minus 17 is 0, so this is 0 on this side. Equal on this side, I have x squared. 6x minus 4x is 2x, a positive 2x. 9 minus 17 is a negative 8. All right, now, remember a while ago in this problem, so see I had 0 on the left side. I'm just, I mean, we transpose, and we do the same thing here. So let's just go ahead and transpose both sides. So I got x squared plus 2x minus 8 is equal to zero. All right, now, remember we factored, right? Now over here, there are only two terms and they both had an x, so the GCF was x, so notice I factored out an x. Here though, this trinomial, I'm gonna go ahead and use two binomials to factor it. And you could use a quadratic formula, but I'm just using factoring here. Because the, when, when, whenever you're solving a, a uh, square root equation, you're, the ones that we're gonna do will be factorable. So x, x, and I think I'm, this will be a 4 and a 2, and this is negative, so that means the signs are different. And the out and the inner, the larger will be that middle sign. So it looks like this has to be positive, this has to be negative. And I always check, um, the out is a negative 2x, the inner is a positive 4x, and you add them up, you get a positive 2x. All right, so, so now we're going to use a zero factor property. So I have two factors whose product is zero, so one of these must be zero. So I'm going to set both of them equal to zero. And I want you to notice something. I went from a square root equation to a quadratic equation to two linear equations. And so if I solve for x in both cases, here I get x to be negative 4, and here I get x to be a positive 2. Now remember, I raised both sides to the even power, right? So since I raised both sides to the even power, you must check. You must check. So you got to check to see if if these proposed solutions, if any of them are extraneous, or if none of them work, or if both work. So both could work. So keep that in mind. Only one could be a solution, and there could be none at all. You would say no solution. So let's go ahead and check each one. So remember, always go back to the original. Always go back to the original. So here was the original. So square root of 4x plus 17 equal x plus 3. So let's check x equal negative 4. So wherever I see the variable x, I'm going to substitute negative 4. So I get the square root of 4 times negative 4 plus 17. And I'm going to see that's going to equal negative 4 plus 3. 4 times a negative 4 is a negative 16. So there's a square root of a negative 16 plus 17, right? Over here, that's a negative 1. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Well, look at this. Negative 16 plus 17 is a positive 1, right? And the square root of positive 1 is a positive 1, and those are not equal. So x equal negative 4 is not going to be a solution. In fact, that's an extraneous, extraneous solution. So that's an extraneous solution. So that's a false solution. All right, so... so x equal negative 4, it's not, going to, it's not going to be a solution. So let's check x equal 2 now. So let's try that one. Again, always go back to the original. Here was the original. Okay, so if I check x equal 2, in place of x, and substitute 2. So I get the square root of 4 times 2 plus 17 equal 2, x is 2, plus 3. 2 times 2 is, I'm sorry, 4 times 2 is 8, right? So I get the square root of 8 plus 17. And 8 plus 17 is 25, so the square root of 25, which we know is 5. But look, 2 plus 3 is what? 5. So those, those work. Those are equal. So that means x equal 2 is a solution, and it is the only solution. So your only solution is x equal 2. All right, and so that is... That is just a quick review of what you're going to be dealing with when, when you get to um, those problems on uh, Topic 6, Part B. Okay?